What is up everyone? 7 Trillium here. Today we are at Bush Gardens Tampa for their Howlow Scream event, which honestly I think has gotten kind of a bad rap over the years. While their house lineup is about half what it was when I first started attending, um, there's a lot of unique things that they do here, and a lot of effects and scare tactics that you don't often see at Universal's events. A lot of Universal scares are very actor trigger based, and they're very scripted. Whereas here at Howlow Scream, the actors have a lot more leeway and there's a lot more improvisation. Um, and that definitely comes into play in the scare zones. Park in the big ass demolition derby! We got chaos! We got mayhem! This is one Halloween event where the quality of the scare zones definitely far outweighs the quality of the haunts. Now while I rag on Universal scare zones a lot because they kind of look the same the year after year, Busch Gardens Tampa gets a little bit of a pass because they have such lush foliage throughout that just creates such great hiding spots for these actors, and there's going to be scares coming from angles that you would never expect. So I'm very excited to see what they pull off tonight. Also shout out to my friend Kevin, um, I wasn't planning on coming this trip but he offered to drive me all the way down to Tampa and put up with me for the night. So. Without him, you wouldn't have this vlog. Animals are good for clout and views, right? I know this isn't necessarily a coaster channel, but Iron Gwazi is definitely worth the drive down to Howlow Scream. Puts Velocicoaster to shame, in my opinion. It's also worth noting that the park is much, much larger than Universal, so even if the crowds look heavy, there's tons more nooks and crannies that those guests will be hiding in throughout the park. Your Howlow Scream admission also gets you in at 5 p.m., which means that you've got a full two hours before the event starts to take a peek at the scare zones in the daylight and enjoy all the spectacular rides that Busch Gardens has. Once the sun goes down, however, the atmosphere changes so much. And to me, the epitome of a theme park Halloween event is being able to ride these massive roller coasters in the dark and just see the fog that's seeping through the streets and hear the screams as you go up the lift hill. There's truly no other experience like it, and it's not something that you even get at HHN. <laughs> All right, we started off our spooky night with the junkyard, um, an outdoor type scare zone full of all sorts of props from years past at Howlow Scream. And sometimes the quality of these outdoor scare zones is even better than some of the haunts at HHN. <laughs> you can tell this is such a different event from HHN and in a very good way and it's not really a Halloween event until you've got your jello shot syringe and your blood bag cocktail lots of good-looking specialty drinks throughout the park as well and it seems like each bar had something different all right witch of the woods first haunt of the night let's go all right, so Witch of the Woods, very, very long house. Two-story colonial building sets, a very, very long intro outside with some surprise bungee scares, um, lots of misdirection inside with mannequins, animatronics causing some bushes to rustle, um, even more bungee scares. The thing with these hollow scream mazes, the narratives are very loose and there's no real story beats to follow, but after five or six minutes, it can kind of cause fatigue. Um, but some pretty good sets and a lot, a lot of characters inside. I think the shortcut was that they forgot to add a few more pixels to this background. nuts already just imagine it in the dark So we just got out of the Forgotten Uprising, and it's a pretty unique concept. I'm um, a vampire-run BDSM club in the sewers. Lots of misdirection inside with lush red curtains and lots of black leather mannequins as well. There's a pretty cool twist on the typical mirror scare where it looks like the actor is right in front of you, but they actually open a door that's directly beside you. Towards the end, there's some nice gothic architecture as you get deeper and deeper into the vampire's lair. A lot of those gothic paintings are drop panels and a really, really cool gothic piano that I wish I had in my living room.
living room. More tricks and tactics than I've seen in a majority of haunts, even if they don't always work, and some pretty cool aerial scares throughout. And the added theme this year was that there was vampire hunters scattered throughout, which didn't really work because they just put a few more actors inside, gave them wooden stakes, and told them to look menacing. Strange is the best way to describe it, which isn't a critique that I make about a lot of haunted houses, so I feel like that alone makes it worth checking out. At this point, we opted to skip the residence, home for the holidays, because the line was even longer than the Forgotten's, and they didn't do anything different with the haunt from last year. Now, if you've never been to Hollow Scream before, it's not a bad haunt. A suburban family are secretly murderers and have decked out their house in holiday decorations, but all I can say is that this haunt marked the decline of Hollow Scream Tampa. There's no originality in the concept or the execution. It's almost like it was created by AI with absolutely no identity. And when people have negative things to say about the event, it's because decisions like that are more and more prevalent while everything that made Hollow Scream Tampa unique is slowly disappearing. Stringlewood Estate. Uh, brand new last year, one of my favorites last year, and still pretty good this year. And this is a long haunt. Maybe a little bit too long. Um, I did really enjoy a lot of the scenes. There were some pretty big sets with some really weird sight lines uh, where you kind of had to peek around the corner to be able to see what you were actually supposed to be looking at. And there was a good mix of animatronic props um, and actual human scares. A lot of drop panels. There's a really cool scene where you see two skeletons lying on this giant bed and the whole top pops up and there's a giant skeleton that just pops out right on in front of it. There's a really cool scene towards the end of the haunt where you kind of crawl through this little crawl space and it has that endless water effect like during the bridge at a Wicked Growth Realm of the Pumpkin. Great animatronic angel statue at the end, uh, very twitchy and unnerving, uh, but I just wish that there was a little more staffing for it. The last haunt we did before my camera died was D.H. Bagum's Circus of Fear and while I try not to compare everything to HHN, there wasn't anything original that didn't just feel like I was going through Dr. Oddfellows again. Again, minus the charismatic icon himself. Quite literally the definition of, yeah, you can copy my homework, but just don't make it too obvious. Some locations, like the inside of the caravan, seemed like mirror images of Dr. Oddfellow's haunt, and while there were some bungees and some more outdoor locations, and the vibes were completely different, I was just already bored before I was even halfway through. Since this was an impromptu last minute trip, we opted not to see any of the shows, which in the past were perfectly fun, but did little to stand out from the party music vibe of many Halloween shows at theme park events. So overall, did I enjoy Hollow Scream Tampa? Yes, I did. And if you've never been to Busch Gardens before, $60 isn't bad to experience some world-class coasters, some of the best scare zones in the state, and some decent quality haunted houses. The unfortunate part is that it's become very obvious that the Hollow Scream budget is being split between long-running Tampa and newly established Orlando. And instead of one spectacular event, I feel like now there is two middling events of mediocre quality. Still, this is a good bridge between your local haunts and Halloween Horror Nights, so I do recommend that you check them out. They can't get bigger and better without your support and your feedback, and there are still tons of fun and surprises to be found throughout. Thank you for watching everyone. Don't forget to support the channel in any small way if you like this content, and I'll see you soon for even more haunt coverage.